Now, I told y'all how Tennessee Republicans are outside of their damn minds. Well, check this out. Nashville State Representative Justin Jones brought resolutions before the body to honor the Grammy achievements. Yesterday, I witnessed something that really to honor, the gra- to honor the Grammy achievements of Paramore, who won Best Rock Album and Best Alternative Music Performance, and Allison Russell, who picked up her first Grammy for Best American Roots Performance for the song Eve Was Black. They voted yes for Paramore, but shot down the measure for Russell. Jones stood up during the announcements portion of the session and tried to voice his concerns about Russell's proclamation being blocked. 9-11 has been objected to by Chairman Faison. Lear Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have one more motion. I have not conferred with the minority leader on this and do anticipate objection, but I move that House Joint Resolution 911 be heard in, or be referred to calendar and rules. It's a proper motion, probably seconded. All right, we're on the board. I uh, 73, 23 nays. House Joint Resolution 911 has been referred to calendar and rules. Uh, I was not planning to stand up today, but I, I want to make an announcement um, regarding Black History Month. Um, happy Black History Month to this body. I want to remind us that Black History Month is happening every day and that just a few minutes ago, um, there was a resolution to honor someone who's making black history. Um, Ms. Allison Russell, who's a friend of myself and Representative Johnson for the past few years. Representative Jones, that's not an announcement. That's not an announcement. Representative Jones, you have a question or a parliamentary question? Mr. Clerk can answer. Representative Jones. Can I, I would like to finish the announcement. Well, that wasn't an announcement. That's the issue. So if you want to make an announcement, that's fine, but that wasn't an announcement. Representative Jones. The announcement is to announce that there are people in our midst who are making black history, and I want to honor them during this Black History Month, including those who are here in Nashville and in our state of Tennessee who are making black history every day, um, who deserve to be honored. And uh, I would like to announce that it's concerning uh, that this body chooses to um, denigrate or to- Representative Jones, that's not an announcement again. Sorry, we're moving on. Sorry. Representative Howe. Russell thanked Jones for trying. She said, thank you. Uh, And Rep. Gloria Johnson uh, presented this resolution as a high uh, honor. If the Tennessee GOP blocked it, I take it as a compliment. Russell wrote on her social media accounts, their bigotry, sadly, is on relentless display. We have a chance this year to make a real change in Tennessee. Damn, Suzette. I, I mean... First of all, the, the absolute easiest thing of any politician is to pass a proclamation. I, 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 hold on. I just spoke. I'm up I just spoke. I spoke in Ohio on Monday, Columbus East High School. I spoke at the University of Tennessee last night. Um, and this here, I was given this here. This here is uh, from the assistant minority leader, uh, Dontavius Jarrells. On behalf of the House of Representatives of the 135th General Assembly of Ohio, I'm pleased to welcome Roland Martin to the great state of Ohio and the city of Columbus. And it goes on to talk about uh, a variety of things in my career or whatever. And I- I've got a ton of these uh, from states all around the country places where I've spoken, I mean, you name it, uh, Tennessee, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama. I mean, I got keys to the city. I got, I mean, I got awards all over here. I mean, I got all kind of this stuff. These white Republicans are like, nah, damn that. We ain't even gonna pass a proclamation for this black woman. Yes, Roland, this feels like deja vu. This is the same body I'd just like to remind our viewers that had uh, the Tennessee Three make national headlines when they decided to expel two young black brothers, Justin Pearson and uh, who we just heard from, uh, Justin uh, Shea Batista Jones. And uh, they did not during that time also expel their colleague, Gloria Johnson. And there was no given reason uh, of any uh, import or substance as to why the disparity. And here we are yet again, uh, looking at something as simple as a proclamation, as you pointed out, mostly just ceremonial in nature, having no 
you know, a, a legal potency, right, just to acknowledge a Tennessean uh, like Miss Russell, who, just like her counterpart, uh, Paramore, won a Grammy. But here we see a body, yet again, who is making some sort of distinction without uh, uh, any kind of uh, credible explanation as to why it seems as if the young artist who happens to be white is okay for the proclamation, but the young artist who happens to be black gets no acknowledgement. It's shameful. It's shameful. And I'm glad Justin Jones tried to uh, make a part of the record there uh, in the Tennessee House that this is wrong and that his fellow uh, uh, legislators are, are to be held to account. This is not okay. This sets, again, yet another precedent in that state that for some reason, some of its citizens deserve recognition while some of them don't. And we have to make sure we are right alongside him in calling it out. Now, uh, here's the deal, Robert. Um, this uh, Jeremy Faison, uh, this Republican, uh, he actually uh, had an issue with it. Uh, and uh, the folks of the Tennessee Holler, who do some great work, uh, let's see if I can play this here. Uh, they actually uh, caught up with him trying to uh, demand some answers from him. Check this out. Come on, guys, audio, please. Okay, pull up audio, please. Thank you. Here we go. Hey, Jeremy, what, what issue did you have with the Allison Russell resolution? What was your problem with that one? What's your problem with Harris, Allison Russell, Jeremy? Is it who she is? Just speak another day. Ah, uh, seventy-three, twenty-three names. House Joint Resolution. So, so he he, he wouldn't even answer the question. Uh, look, as as my Angelo said, when somebody tells you who they are, believe them the first time. Tennessee is making it very clear um, they are not evolving much from the days of William Bedford Forrest when it comes to the legislat uh, legislature there. Uh, and I think at this point in time, that this this doesn't motivate everybody in Memphis, everybody in Nashville to get up and turn out to vote. There are 16.3 uh, percent of the population of black folks are in that state. If you mobilize, you can uh, you can make some real action and make some real changes in that state house so these folks won't feel so comfortable and cavalier to act in this way uh, but also to my black conservative friends now that i talk to all the time you know we got a bunch of them when you have these conversations you say that black folks are basically just making up racism uh that is a uh, thing of the past and that we're still just belly aching about it these are the types of micro racist aggressions that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and if this is what they'll do directly in your face imagine what they're doing in those boardrooms imagine what they're doing when they're having those hiring and firing decisions imagine what they're doing when they're trying to decide if a highway goes in an empty field or through a black neighborhood or if they're going to build a a dam that destroys a black community around the country. This is just the the the, the small microaggressions and racism that black folks have to do every day. And we have people like Nikki Haley saying America's not not just isn't a racist country, but has never been a racist country. I would love for her and some more conservative friends to explain exactly why um, you have a situation like this and what exactly this woman did wrong uh, to not be qualified. You know, Ben Shapiro and Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens have been saying, well, maybe it's diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's the reason and these people aren't qualified for things, when in reality, they do anything they can to cover up for the white supremacists in this country. They still hold political power around this nation. And, and the thing here, um, um, Rebecca, this is not a question of, oh, well, we're going to support this representative over here uh, when it comes to Paramore, but we're going to ignore Justin Jones. Jones brought up both of the resolutions. So they explicitly what? said, we go honor the white person but damn the black, the, bl the black woman. One out of five black adults in Tennessee are ineligible to vote. 20% of the 16.3% of black folks that Robert referenced are ineligible to vote um, in Tennessee. And this same legislature is trying to make it harder for black folks um, to be able to vote. Full stop. This current and even previous Tennessee legislatures are clearly anti-black, i.e. they are racist. They have hostility towards black people. Just like Suzette said, when we saw what happened last year with the Tennessee Three, the two people who got expelled were, guess what, black. The one person who did not get expelled was white. So look, dogs bark, 
cats meow, racists are racist. And that's what we're seeing with the Tennessee legislature. And by the way, Eve was black and scientifically black women have the Eve gene. I'm telling you, I mean, what, what we see here, folks, from Tennessee Republicans, Tennessee white Republicans, is perfectly clear. Uh, they would do all they can to demonize uh, and to destroy black people. Uh, last night, I spoke at the University of Tennessee Martin. Uh, that is about two hours and 40 minutes from Nashville. It's in rural Tennessee. Uh, and, and the black folks were telling me, they were like, man, it is different here with the white folks here. Uh, and let me just be perfectly clear. I let them know exactly what I had to say about a whole lot of issues. Uh, and they heard a whole lot of stuff about white folks, about black folks, about history of this country. Uh, I have the video. We're gonna uh, we're gonna upload that. We're gonna we're gonna stream that uh, event again. I spoke there last night, uh, but that's what has to happen. And I and I said to them point blank. I said I need the white folks in this room, and those who are watching to understand. Don't call me to come talk to your friends. I need y'all white folk to talk to y'all white folks. That's what has to happen. Okay. I said and and, 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 and because because what I brought up. I even brought up all the people, all, all these MAGA white folks and even some black folks, uh, crazy Megan Kelly acting the fool, complaining about um, lift every voice and sing uh, being sung uh, at, at the Super Bowl. And even black conservative Armstrong Williams uh, posted a tweet complaining about that. And even, even Pastor Daryl Scott was like, are y'all nuts? How y'all complaining about a Christian hymn? And not only that, <laughs> Lift Every Voice and Sing was literally written for a birthday celebration of Abraham Lincoln. It wasn't until the 1919 when the NAACP said that it was the National Black Anthem. Uh-oh. What happened in 1919? Some called Red Summer. And what was Red Summer? When black people were being killed across the country and race riots. It wasn't until 1931 that America adopted the Star Spangled Banner as a national anthem. But wasn't the Star Spangled Banner racist? Hmm, check out stanza three. There's a reason why it was dropped. So I love these people. Suzette, and I'm gonna do a round with you, Robert, and Rebecca. I love these people who claim that by singing, lift every voice and sing, we are dividing America. We shouldn't have two anthems. You know what? You know what? I'll take you. I, I will agree with you. We should not have two anthems. Get rid of the racist one. The one written by Francis <laughs> Scott Key, the Star Spangled Banner. Plus, lift every voice and sing is a better damn song anyway. Suzette. Listen, I was inside of uh, an establishment and they had uh, everything played out into the restaurant except for the Black National Anthem. We were waiting and I was left because I thought, wait a minute, we're here to watch the entire uh, program. So even on a local level, that was happening. Uh, but nonetheless, I... Hold on, hold on. Been, no, uh, wait, wait. No, uh, uh, no. Did they turn it up? No, they didn't turn it up. Did we missed the whole thing. Did y'all did y'all get did, did, did y'all get in the ass? No, listen, I don't want to fight, but I did mention to the manager I was and I did tweet about it and I did put it out there. No, no, uh, Suzette, that's that's what you gotta say. Hey, hey! <laughs> turn that up. See, no, you we were we how, roll it. It I, was a packed house. I don't give right. a damn how packed it was. How many of y'all were there? It was just me and my homegirl. It was just two of us. Shit, that's all you need. Them. All you need is one. <laughs> Y'all could get that food Hold for up. free. Hold up. The Bible says where two or more... The Bible says where two or more are gathered. <laughs> Y'all had Oh, my two. God. It is. <laughs> yeah, we did. Well, I did think about writing corporate after the, thereafter, but you're right. Um, in the moment, it was very distress, distressing, actually, just to see that, hey, this also should be broadcast uh, nonetheless, I was just looking back, and I'm not a super fan uh, or, or a historian buff when it comes to the National Football League, but looking at the segregationist history of American football and the NFL, um, I just think it is more than apropos to acknowledge 
the roots of who makes up the majority of the people and for the past folks who were denied opportunities to play that should have been a part of the National Football League. It's just, to me, as poignant as in America the Beautiful that you also pick another song of, of great significance to a majority of your players and, and the folks that help to make your sport possible. So I do think this kind of made up controversy about, uh, uh, or I guess to some real, they feel like it actually is some disrespect, but looking at, like you're saying, the history of where it comes from and the reason we need to acknowledge uh, that even this league that we see as black male dominant was once highly segregated but, but, and prevented but, black men. But this is why... You know, he- but this is why history matters, Robert. The you know, reason the Super Bowl even exists is because the AFL was recruiting black players left and right, and they were kicking the NFLs behind, and the NFL was like, oh, damn, we can't. They merged. The, so the first two games, they, they didn't call it the Super Bowl. But the reason the Super Bowl exists because of the black-white divide. So it's more than appropriate to have Lift Every Voice and Sing Ben's song. Uh, look, Roller, this goes back to eighth grade civics. There's a difference between a country and a nation. I want everybody to understand that the reason there are two words, because a country is a uh, geopolitical uh, boundaries in which you can have nations within. A nation is a group of people that have a similar social linguistic background. They share, share religious values, ethnic background uh, uh, values. Um, they come from the same people. That's why you have Bosnians and Serbians. They look exactly the same. They're different ethnicities. I know we kind of tend to gloss over these things. So a national group, a nation, can have an anthem within that nation. The same way the Cherokee nation can have an anthem. They're the same way African and Bambada and the Zulu Nation can have an anthem. Any nation of people can have an anthem. And when you have a sports league where 70 plus percent of the players are of a particular ethnic background, it only makes sense to play the ethnic the anthem of that ethnic background prior to the game. Why do I say this? Before the Stanley Cup playoff games, they play the Canadian national anthem, O Canada. I, I, because I, it's, not, it's not even just hockey. Go if you go to an yeah. M, if you go to an NBA game and or a baseball game. And the Canadian teams are playing, their anthem is played. And, and that's exactly the point, because when you're recognizing the nationality of the majority of the players or a large portion, it simply makes sense to respect them by playing an anthem which is near and dear to their uh, to their heritage, to their history, to their socioeconomic and racial and ethnic backgrounds. So the idea that this is somehow a problem is stupid. Secondarily, if you have an issue with them playing the Black National Anthem at the game, why didn't you say anything about Post Malone singing uh, uh, God Bless America? Because that's a separate anthem. Doesn't that separate people? Are we separating people between uh, God Bless America and America the Beautiful? Can't we just have one? The entire point is that the, yep. uh, these, the conservatives do not like the independence of black people. We don't want you kneeling. We don't want you protesting. We don't want you singing no anthem. You get out there, you run that ball, you throw that ball, you catch that ball, and you do a little dance for me, you can entertain me. But when it comes to making real decisions, all I want you for is your entertainment value, not for your um, not for the actual personhood of you. That's why the book Twenty Million Dollar Slaves was so important for people to realize. (coughs) Forty million. uh, You mean uh, uh, you mean Bill Roten's book Forty Million Dollar Slave? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, they they they, in in the place that we are in America today, when white Americans feel they're they're losing their grip on their country. They're losing their grip on Bud Light, so they're going to boycott it. They're losing their grip on uh, pop music, so they don't want Taylor Swift at the game. They want to, to exercise dominion over black people, these black athletes who are richer than them, who are more athletically talented than them, who have more business savvy than them. The only way that they can exercise power is by saying, sit down, don't take a knee, don't protest, don't sing your anthem, anthem, all you do is entertain me. And that uh, and that it gives them this idea that they still have some control in this nation. So I say take every last thing from them because I don't need your permission to sing my anthem. Um, we'll bring a final comment here. Um, you know, Stephen A. Smith did a video where he blasted people for, for calling Megyn Kelly racist, saying that you take the power out of it when you, when you just assign to everybody. So I'm not going to call Megyn Kelly racist. <laughs> but I'm going to say she's stupid. I'm going to say she's dumb. I'm going to say she's historically illiterate. 
and I'm gonna say uh, she absolutely is a Karen. Go ahead. Here's the thing. Run me my reparations. Give me my cash money. Megan Kelly can say whatever the hell it is that she wants to say. Because at the end of the day, the Megan Kellys of the world are the people who probably owe me reparations. So bottom line, say what you want to say. Have whatever anthem do you want. Just run me my reparations. Because at the end of the day, we saw that the whole Super Bowl was the height of hypocrisy. We saw in racism printed, painted in big letters at the end of each end zone. But it's also ironic. This is the same league that colluded against Kaepernick. So at the end, we can even take a step further and say the only reason why him taking a knee was even a problem is because the U.S. government was giving the NFL millions of dollars um, to run um, pro-military um, placements through televised NFL games. So at the end of the day, all of this is about money anyway. So since this is about money, run me my reparations.